Defend yourself against DDoS attacks by hiding your true IP address with ExpressVPN. And visit my custom link expressvpn.com slash gillymaster in the description to find out how you can get an extra 3 months free. Hey everyone and welcome to another GTA Online video here on the channel. Now we don't know exactly what the next update is going to bring in terms of brand new content or overall size of the DLC in general. That's all up to speculation as of now, but one thing we do know is the update will likely bring in some new quality of life changes and bug fixes. Because that's been the case for the past few years of updates, they've really been going hard on implementing good features that the community has been asking for. And so in today's video, I want to go over some of those quality of life changes or bug fixes that I would like to see brought to the game. Things that don't have to do with adding in any new content, but rather just changing existing mechanics or features to improve the player experience. And starting off with the first one, this has to do with the Raiju Jet. The Raiju Jet has a few problems with it. The first one is that the cannons do not show tracers for other players, nor do they make a sound for other players. So in combat, it makes it rather difficult to tell when a Raiju is shooting at you because the only way you know that you're being shot at is if the shot hits you and you hear the explosion of the bullet impacting you. And I don't think this is an intentional thing because when you are firing the explosive MGs yourself, you can hear the guns firing and see the tracers, but it's not the case for other players when it should be. And the other issue with the Raiju is with its armor. You can't really destroy this vehicle by shooting it with machine guns. So for most dogfighting planes, they have to go for a cockpit snipe, which is obviously a lot harder to pull off. Something is definitely off with the armor. I like the way it operates in PvE, taking a lot of hits from most NPCs, but in PvP, it should not be basically invincible to bullets from another jet. So hopefully those two Raiju issues get fixed in the upcoming patch. The second fix I like to see also has to do with jets, and that is the cannon exploit. In case you haven't been in the loop, Rockstar nerfed the laser and hydro cans in the San Andreas Mercenaries update, but only in free mode. So in jobs, you can still use the regular cannons. However, if you use the quick job feature, you can actually trick the game into thinking you're in a job when in reality you're in free mode and you get those old cannons back to do whatever you want with. It stays there permanently until the end of the session or whenever you leave. And lots of people use this trick. You yourself might have been confused as to how you got killed by the original cannons when you thought they got nerfed. This is the reason why. I'm assuming this will get fixed. They most definitely are aware of this trick existing ever since a couple weeks after the mercenaries update so that should have given them more than enough time to fix it properly. The third quality of life change here is one that I feel just makes sense, and that is increased armor storage. Now I don't mean to increase the amount of super heavy armor we can store, that should stay the same at 10, but rather let us buy 10 of each armor. I made a video a while ago talking about how I think armor is kind of useless in online, and in that video I mentioned that they put in a change to only use certain types of armor depending on how much damage you need to repair the armor. So if it only take one bullet for example and equip armor again through the weapon wheel option, it's not going to waste a whole super heavy armor from you when it only needs to repair a little bit. It's going to use one of the other smaller ones depending on how much damage your armor needs to repair it. However, the only way to hold 10 of each armor for that to be even useful is from Rockstar gifting us armor for like Christmas, for example. So in regular gameplay, if you use armor a lot, it's still going to expel super heavy armor regardless, making that entire change pointless. So allowing us to buy and hold 10 of each armor type at the same time would be the perfect solution here. This next one is a bit more subtle, but for me personally, as someone who often plays in event only or friend lobbies with viewers, this has been very annoying. When you invite someone to an event only lobby, the game will often kick a message back to them telling them the session is private and that they need an invite to join. But that doesn't make any sense because it's from an invite that they accepted that is giving that message for. And we can't use crews anymore because I don't really trust them ever since I had my crew stolen that one time. So we're kind of running out of options here. It just shouldn't be the case where you can't join an event only lobby even though you accept an invite to that lobby. It doesn't make any sense. But like I said, I doubt this one affects too many players, but it's still annoying when it does happen. And something that ultimately I'd like to see them fix. Another quality of life change that has seemingly turned buggy as well has to do with the bad sport system. Now I've been saying for a while now that the bad sport system needs a complete overhaul. It's been something that I've had on these kinds of videos multiple times now. But a new issue that my viewers brought to my attention is that even when you complete a job, the game will give you a message warning you of bad sport points for leaving despite completing it. Now for me, whenever I got this message, I always thought it was just a visual bug, but I really had no way of truly knowing that because I can't see what's happening in the back end because I'm not even close to becoming a bad sport. But from what I've been told, people have actually gotten put into bad sport or became a dodgy player because of this issue, which would make sense for leaving jobs, but for completing them to still get awarded bad sport points should not be the case. I'll also reiterate what I've said in my previous video about Bad Sport. 
I think weaponized vehicles should have no penalty for blowing up, but regular, non-weaponized vehicles should have the penalty doubled for blowing them up. Or an exponential increase in bad sport points awarded for blowing up a number of regular vehicles in a row, because it's a bit silly to punish for the destruction of weaponized vehicles when trying to defend yourself. It always has been. Moving on, I am once again going to be talking about the in-game vehicle websites. I still am a firm believer that we need a discounted tab. They removed cars from the websites who supposedly streamlined the browsing experience, but when it comes to finding a vehicle that's discounted, you still have to scroll down just not as much as before, so I feel like it didn't accomplish much really, whereas having a dedicated tab for discounts, on the other hand, Players can just log on at the beginning of each week, their new event week, click that one tab and see every vehicle discounted at the time back to back right there. Of course, it would be ditched for that website, but each different website would also have its own discounted tab. And it could look something like this concept that I made for it a little while ago. But also another addition I thought of on top of this, when Rockstar brings back certain vehicles from the websites, they often discount them. Well, it'd be cool if on the discounted tab, they listed the vehicle that is brought back in Simeon's The Lucky Wheel or wherever, but it showed as sold out on the website to signify it's available on discount, just not available on the website. You'd have to go to other places to get it. Because the way it is now, you have to go and check the website only to realize it's not there, the vehicle you're looking for, to where you didn't have to go check out the different dealerships. And that's honestly kind of annoying. But even if they didn't want to do that, just having a discounts tab would go a very long way. And to end off the video, we have a small but highly requested feature. Let us color stock rims. I can't tell you how many cars in this game have amazing looking stock rims, but we can't color the stock rims for whatever reason. Or they'll put a car on the dealership that has black stock rims, so I'll have to sell my car that I bought off the website just to go buy the one that's on display to have the black rim color that I want on the vehicle, which I guess is kind of what they're going for, but it's just lame. Clearly we can see it's a feature that works if they do it behind the scenes, or if you happen to do merge glitches, you can merge custom stock rim colors on vehicles. But it's something that they should just enable for all cars, especially with the new wheel paint being added for GTA Plus 2 over the past few months. If they wanted to, maybe just allow it at our own auto shops and at the LS Car Meet as another incentive to go and interact with those places if they didn't want to have it at the regular Los Santos custom shops. But that's definitely a change that I think everyone in the community would respect. Now, I don't know exactly how hard this would be to implement because there are so many cars in GTA. Would they have to go through each individual car and enable this separately? Or can they just have some sort of script that enables it for every car? And I know it's not every single stock rim that can be painted, but they should at least let us paint the stock rims on the cars that have stock rims that can be painted because they definitely know what those cars are. Anyways, those are all the quality of life changes or bug fixes that I would personally like to see happen in the upcoming GTA Online December DLC. Let me know in the comments what kinds of changes you would like to see, because I'm sure there's a whole lot more that I didn't even think of for this video. It would be impossible to document every single possible one. And if you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, feel free to leave a like as well as subscribe to my channel for more GTA Online content. I also want to give a huge shout out to all my channel members for your support. If you'd like to become a member for some exclusive perks, you can either use the join button or the link that's down in the description. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.